Hello, welcome to episode five of Selling Effort in the Bayside neighborhood. And I'm Kevin. And I'm Ashley. So what's up? Life. It's been a minute. It's been a minute. Fake spring has happened already. Fake spring, guys. Last weekend, I mowed my lawn. It was exciting. And then today, I woke up and it's raining. So <laughs> fake spring is upon us. And there's going to be that glimmer of hope. I feel like every two days of sunshine. And then it's going to be like, just kidding. Just kidding. Yeah. No, that's Washington. My Facebook memory showed me that it was snowing like five years ago. Isn't this that crazy? Week. So I guess snow can happen during this time but it's, it's still we really don't get like official warm warm weather until maybe like may or june and then really like the hot weather is july 10th <laughs> august july 10th yeah july 10th <laughs> very that's, specific that's thing. the date that's when it's going to happen this year everybody you heard it here first so yes we're in the midst of fake spring so don't be alarmed if it rains one day and it's sunny the next <laughs> we'll get through it guys more it's vitamin d it is getting brighter out, though. It's actually... The sun is up at least by 7, and it doesn't set until at least after 6 now, so... It's crisis, though, where all I get in my car at 6, and it's still sunny out, and I'm like, I must do more activities. It's well, time to go out and do things at night, and I'm very much not a person that goes out and does things late, at night. <laughs> lately for work, though, I have been, like, slowly finishing my work, and then I get done, I was like, oh my god, it's 7. Yeah, yeah me too. I'm like, oh no, oh no. It's playing with my eyes already. No, so. totally. I, last night it was like pushing eight and I'm like, ooh, I should stop working. But the nice thing is with showing homes, I can push them for later now because it's still Safety. daylight out and it's safer. safer. I don't have to have flashlights for everybody because I feel like half the time we all got flashlights out by the last house trying to just like look in the backyard and it's dark. So there is that positive. So how's the market now? It's marketing. It's marketing. <laughs> um, I don't know, guys. I feel like prices have come down a little bit. Yes. Um, not drastically. Not drastically, no. j just a little bit. But then there's still those random houses that are going in real high. And you're like, where are you getting this pricing from? Is this from two years ago? Yeah. Yes. Um, so there's that. I'm seeing prices drop after about two weeks of being on market. So mm -hmm. if you're kind of looking and it's at like day 12, day 14, you're going to probably see a price drop, which is exciting. Right um average price here in ever right now 515 i feel like that's kind of on par for what i've been seeing i'm still yeah. seeing a handful of things though that are like 650 plus um a lot think, of 700 plus too i think that's when you start adding the extra bedrooms right yes. that's what i've seen at yes so yeah the the, i've noticed the ones that are in the 500s seem to be like the three bedroom one baths uh every once in a while they'll be pushing six mm -hmm. but they might have like the adu in the back or like the two something, car special. Or something special about them so there's those um days on market up i'd say consistent right yeah. now it says we're at like yeah 39 because of what's been going on from the winter so again if your house is like super cute and fresh paint newer flooring kind of that hgtv sell. type house it's gonna sell and multiple offers. And multiple in some offers. Cases. Yeah. The one of our clients just went up against I think four different offers. So yeah. that was fun. And uh, we're winning some of them, which is exciting. <laughs> it that just is depends. Good. Yeah. I've won a few in the couple last couple of weeks, but it's been tough to get back into that how do we negotiate with closing cost because of interest rates. Super fun. Something about interest rates, and I think, especially as we're getting into March and we're moving into our spring market, which always gets busy here in mm -hmm. Washington, something I think people are realizing is they're just normalizing to themselves the higher interest rates that we're dealing with. It's still very volatile. Like, I still, you know, have to do this every single day, up and downs. But for the most part, it's relatively average yep. and normal. So I think people are just understanding that and at least whoever they're working with are making them understand that. Totally. And just getting out there and getting offers on houses. Yeah. And I think if, if they afford it, well, it right. in their budget. Correct. But Please, I think key points. I like to present to my sellers the reality of where the market's at and tell them, Hey, yeah, your house is worth about this much. Yeah. But we've lost probably a quarter, if not half of the buyers that were in that price point range because of the interest rates. So maybe offer a credit up front or let's seriously consider some of those offers that are offering the closing costs because sometimes you make out better 
when closing costs yeah. are thrown out there, which is funny. Like at the end of the day, the math maths, and you're like, oh, I actually did okay with the closing ma- costs. The, the math does math. The math I math. do the math, and I have to tell agents how to do the math. I don't know it's... how to do the math. I make Kevin do the math, everybody. Goes, <laughs> I don't know what the heck's happening. They tell me I should know. I do know kind of. I do of, have calculators, of, though, just so everyone knows. Fancy calculators. I just have my <laughs> iPhone phone, and I'm like, doot, 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 minus you five. You can download a mortgage calculator on your phone. I think I have one. I just need to use it's it better. Easy. Maybe after this, we can practice mortgage calculating. <laughs> but yes, market's good. Um, homes for sale. There was about 121 when I looked yesterday for the last month to month. It's up. It's it's up. There's still just not a lot. I, I would really love to see what you would classify kind of as like a starter home pricing point. I want more of those. I just, I'm consistently, like I said, seeing 600 plus K and I'm like, ugh. Just I mean, like a good 350, 450. I mean, house. Everett is the place for for starter homes. It's just they need to get on the market if yeah. need be. But obviously, don't displace people. If you need to sell, sell. But if you don't need to, right. if you don't need to sell, keep your house. Keep I'm your all, house. I'm doing that, so I get it. <laughs> but yeah, I just it's it's hard to be in like a growing city and then needing housing. I actually just read a report, which we kind of go into this. Sure. Um, Snohomish County. Is supposed to be accounting for, I think it was 149,000 people coming in in like the next decade, mm-hmm. and our housing is severely limited. It's uh, like 40,000 below. What yeah, it to and I forget. You essentially 149,000 divided by two. So I think if two person like going like we need that many houses. So we're we're looking at a lot of homes that need to be built. And yeah. the article talked about how Everett just opened up another um, apartment complex area over here on. Wetmore? The Wetmore? Is that the Nimbus? Is that Wetmore? I think it's what. The, the Nimbus, Nimbus is on Hoyt. 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 The marquee is on. Yes. Wetmore. Which was about 145 new homes. So, like, we're getting there. And then, as you know, down on the riverfront, there we're getting there. There's a bunch of stuff 1400 coming. 1,400 units will be built. There. That's crazy. That's a lot of units. So, what's great too is Washington. We recently just passed legislation to expand and eliminate zoning for single family homes as well so that allows us to build what's called middle housing which is your duplexes your triplexes and your quadplexes so multi-family houses right so you can condense down not just townhomes but like actual multi-family labeled homes and in higher density housing same with like the adu in the back so a mm-hmm. lot of things at least in like the everett area is starting I heard it's hard to get the permits right now, but building a unit in your backyard so that you have a quote unquote mother in law uh, unit, which I think will be helpful for a lot of us. I don't think that's ne- not necessarily just in like the equity of like owning your home, but as you know, when you drive around the Everett neighborhood, the houses are kind of on the smaller side. <laughs> so, like, the idea of having much. like a third bedroom for most or like a fourth bedroom or just a space for like your family to come stay at or your friends to stay at it, mm-hmm. to me is great. So, I don't even know how much of that will become like Airbnb okay. or if it's going to be just for your family. Cause we're all growing and I think a lot of people want to live in their homes and stay in their area. I would say, yeah. yeah. If you like where you live, stay where you want to live. I right? love this area. <laughs> um, so something cool. I want to transition. So we're in the Bayside neighborhood today, mm-hmm. right? Which also encompasses the central business district. So a lot's going on. And this, this part of town outside of all the other places in North Everett that we've spoken about have a very long history. So it was established in 1892. Something of note, and this was a really cool factor when Ashley and I were researching this. Um, If you don't already know, the Samuels family were just a fantastic piece of history for Everett. Um, It's something I discovered and I was like, I never knew this had existed and I'm just grateful to know that it has existed. So Jenny and John Samuels, with their son Wesley, they are one of the first African-American black families that purchased a home here in Everett. Yep. And they have done a lot to push equity, affordable housing, mm-hmm. um, equal rights for all minority groups, especially during the time. And this is at the beginning of the, ni- the, the 20th century. So you're talking like 1900. Yeah. Slavery still fresh in everyone's mind. Totally. So much discrimination going on, especially with housing. Redlining is a huge thing. Steering is a huge thing. Mm-hmm. Limitations on affordability for minority homes and peoples, right? Mm-hmm. Um, so they were one of the first. The house still stands, everybody. Their house yeah. still is uh, still standing um, over on the 2200 block on Wetmore. Mm-hmm. It's a fantastic, nice little house with an awesome porch. Yeah. So the fact that they're able to not, not rent it, 
not lease it. They purchased it. Yeah. It was their house. They were the owners, which is astounding at that time period. Totally. Um, and then Jenny Samuels, hero. I'm going to label her <laughs> hero. Um, she, she was one of the ones that was deeply involved with the women's club movement in Everett. So she founded it here in Everett. A me you know, executive member, all that good stuff. But it was an, a way to outreach to the black community in Everett specifically, improving conditions for black people in Washington. So it not only had a profound effect here locally in our city, in the state, but also moved to a national movement. Um, yeah, I think it's awesome. I thought it was awesome too. And the cool thing with them being so involved and then having that home, they were in um, what's known as like the travel publication as the Green Book. So I know that that helps mm -hmm. a lot of African Americans and Black uh, people find locations safe and safe places um, to go and stay at. So it seems like they were very much opening their door for travelers and guests to kind of come and hang out with them, which I thought was cool. So kind of your your lonely planet of such. Um, yeah. But with like real life addresses where you could actually meet the people, which I think is cool. So. And demographically, that's kind of a big thing, especially yeah. for Everett. Oh. Um, if you are from Washington in the area, then you certainly understand that. Yep. Um, but th they did a lot. So their son, Wesley, also served during World War I mm -hmm. um, and eventually returned back to Everett. Um, Jenny and John Samuels, they did a lot to support the war effort. They crossed borders and worked with the Tulalip tribe on, on their reservation to help support and bring awareness and work together. So that intersectionality just is there. Yeah. It, is, it has existed, they're which I think is. Yeah. yeah. And their legacy continues, yeah. right? Um, while their, their club is no longer in existence, it still exists in many other organizations that, you know, are huge proponents of human rights, equity, Inclusion, intersectionality, all that jazz. And fair yeah, housing. Just, I mean, that's, even, we have so much more to do and like so much farther to go, but even, I mean. Even yeah. right now, I see article after article of discrimination on who the inhabitants of the homes are just on the appraised price. Totally. It's wild. You're right. like, why? Like, what? Like, the Come fact on, that black homeowners have to go through an experiment to see how they can get yeah. more value in their home just by removing their own pictures in their house is this ridiculous. Yeah. And it is just lingering effects of redlining and steering and housing discrimination, especially here in Washington, too. Totally. And then there's the the book, the redlining book. Is it called Redlining? Have you read it yet? I have it. It's sitting on my bookshelf. It's, I need to read it more. Um, I know what you Yeah. Yeah. I've, I need to get into that one just to kind of dig more. I get really angry when I start reading about that stuff. And so I have to, you know, I'll read the articles and you're just like, come on, people. Like, we're all, I mean, in my mind, we're all equal. And, like, I treat everybody with respect of just everybody like you're human I, like we're all the same Let's work. and it's just so frustrating that there's just so much to do so i it's nice to know that there was kind of a family here that started such a great movement so for early. our black community um it does say that they're actually buried at the evergreen cemetery and yes. you know i love the evergreen cemetery we've talked about it before everybody it's a really pretty cemetery go check it out go say hi to the samuels um yeah i just i i love that cemetery it's so pretty it is so pretty all of them. Anyway, I love cemeteries. I, I could go on for days. This could be a whole podcast on cemeteries. Let's not do that. Um, we would be dipping into the true crimes. Like how, did they, how did they pass away? Should we have an episode on true crime in no. Everett? I think we could. You know, Washington is, and serial killers. I know. I'm just I know. saying. That is not my cup of tea. Yeah. Interesting. I don't know if we can be friends anymore. We'll see how this goes, guys. Um, <laughs> another building that that's really cool. I just drove by it on the way to where we're uh, hanging out today, but the Everett High School. Yeah. Uh, when I moved to Everett, I said, wow, what building is that? Like, that's a cool building. It's a, it's a cool building, everybody. It actually is very yeah. profound for uh, high school. <laughs> right, it is. And it, it, I was reading about the high school. It's a true block that they built it on. Mm -hmm. Obviously, they took up a lot of space. So now I know that the school has moved different so the fun thing about that school is the kids are kind of always walking on the streets because they have to, like, cross the street to get to, to the get next to class. Dog. And the gym and all that stuff. So I enjoy that. It's a really pretty, 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 pretty school. Um, they are the seagulls, I think. Is that official? Or do they just I don't remember. I believe they're the seagulls. Kevin likes to make fun of me and seagulls, but hey, it's Everett. Um <laughs> the one little tidbit about the school is it only costs two hundred thousand dollars to make and it's all like brick structure. I figure like that was masonry cost. <laughs> 
don't know. It's, it's quite elaborate for yeah, me. Yeah, super so elaborate. Right. It just makes me happy. So anyway, if you're on Colby, go check out the high school. And I then know, get coffee at... Where are we? Pisanos? Pisanos. Fascinated by Paisanos. To, Paisanos. I always say it wrong. In the Key Bank Tower. In the Key Bank Tower. I got their pistachio something of another... Cold foam, cold brew. Yep, that thing. It was good. It's good. <laughs> I like it. And nice stickers up there. It's okay, though. Okay, mine sucked. It's okay. Anyway, cheers to good coffees and good uh, Look how pretty it is if you're in the video. Look at that. Sorry, I love a good coffee. We love coffee. <laughs> too many coffees. I have to stop myself from drinking too much coffee sometimes. Today is my second. So, see how this goes. That's my second caffeine. All right, so, we're going to be a hot mess later. We're going to get yelled at. It's fine. We're good. Um, because we're downtown, let's just talk about actually architectural buildings. Belcourt Apartments, Colby. They are the first apartments in Everett. And it's the pretty brick red building. Yeah. You've seen it. It's massive. Um, anyway, another brick building. First apartments. And that was built in 1909. So I love it. Yeah, anyway. Fun history. Facts. Go find these buildings. Go stare at them and be like, wow, brick. And also, if we haven't already mentioned, the Bayside neighborhood extends from mm -hmm. Broadway, which is, you know, our bisecting highway down the middle of north everett and then all the way of course to the port and then the northern one is 19th street and then the most southern technically is hewitt but we could extend it down to pacific Correct. encompassing the central business di district as well we're so going kind to of all downtown it is with very, all the way up to 19th it's so. very much the downtown center <laughs> of it so lots of apartment lots of um high density housing and lots of businesses it's actually i think our most confined amount of duplexes too so if you do walk oh yeah that's from right. downtown all the way down to 19th on pretty much any given street a lot of the homes have been like changed into duplexes some of the really big homes have been turned into like apartment units i don't know if you've seen that yeah, yeah there's i can't remember what street it's on it's a big blue one mm -hmm. and it's been converted into a bunch of units and stuff like that so i would say this is probably your most walkable friendly is... to downtown we we've walked it downtown quite yeah a just to take like pictures and stuff like that. But I think we might grow. We just walked up and down Hewitt and just, it didn't take us any time at all. No, yeah, it's um, a pretty user friendly street, not too hilly, kind of get by. It's like one hill. One hill. But it's not the worst hill. There could be worse. It's pretty, it's <laughs> it's like Seattle Hills. Let's just get back. Cherry Street in Seattle where you die. Anyway. Well, I was going to say, because I have a favorite intersection. So do I. And that is Colby and Hewitt. Mine's, um, what did I put? Hewitt and Rockefeller. <laughs> but my downside, I forgot about mine. Isn't Hewitt and Rockefeller, if I'm remembering, if it's maybe it's your intersection, um, the building got burnt down, which was like a bowling alley. Oh, there is that empty lot. That empty, is that my intersection that I'm thinking of mentally? Or am or I nearby. thinking more? It's nearby. It it's is, maybe the next one. It Sorry, guys. I got confused when I was thinking What's of near the arena. It's brick buildings, everybody. You know, I love a good brick building. So, and apartments and, and we just small found out apartments. Mm -hmm. Kept walking by saying, there's, there's no way these aren't apartments. <laughs> and then we found out they're apartments. So, because there are a few of them for rent right now. I, hey, if you could take like the top floor and turn it into like a really cool penthouse, yeah, I'd be down. You'd be down? Yeah, I'd live there. I could walk downtown. It'd be so great. Right. Anyway, I have some like favorite places in Everett that I go to kind of on the regular. What? So outside of food and coffee, what are some of the ones that... Our standout businesses. Standout businesses. Well, right now, because it's kind of like the hot in thing, the Apex. Apex is new. Apex we is new. just discovered them. That's where that race horse tracky building that's all brick, Broadway Mason Club. building. Yeah, the Broadway Club on Wetmore and Everett Avenue. So they're renovating it. Totally. Which is fantastic. There's going to be two restaurants. Two restaurants yeah. and lots of event space. Yeah. They just had a concert. Well, they've had a few concerts now, but... Uh, and a UFC fight, too. And a UFC fight. And, like, a kid's high school wrestling thing or something. Yeah, they're, it's huge in there. It doesn't... Like, you go in, you're like, it's huge. But then you see the photos of all these other events happening, you're like, wow, this is massive. Like, it just... It, it's... And what's even it's, yeah. cooler is they have one of the people that's helping them with the, the remodel and renovation is a local artist who does modern, like graffiti art and stuff like that huge massive things so they're displayed all throughout there too amazing yeah i recommend going check it out when so they're doing any kind of show because one it's a great space it's new and we're supporting the new businesses yeah. still it's being used but it's still 
in process of renovation. Mm -hmm. I don't, so yeah, hopefully I don't, in the next year or so yeah, it'll be completed. I don't know if there's a timeline yet given to restaurants and stuff like that. But don't have that yet. Definitely doing active concerts and different events. So that's yeah. exciting. Shack Art Center is my like close second. I go there about monthly, maybe quarterly, depending on like the season, but great little museum slash active art studio so yeah. when you're there you can see all the art but then they have a glass wall that shows you all the glass blowing so yeah you can take courses there to do different things so like seasonally so you know in the fall they'll do like the glass pumpkins um they do these ones that are little seashell things they just have a lot of stuff and then they also offer i think it's with like Snohomish County in general, the high schools, they offer art classes to students, I think at a free cost. So um, kind of over in the back left side, you'll usually see a lot of student art. So there's like different themes and stuff like that. One year it was like portraits where they had to hand draw portraits and stuff like that. So. Is it still the Ukrainian exhibit no, in there? It's gone. I'm so sad. It was so good. Well, it was also sad. I know. It's sad. The whole thing was sad, but it was a really good exhibit. I... I recommend going on to like their Instagram and looking at the photos and stuff because it was a very touching and moving definitely cried exhibit um yeah. that art was flown in from the Ukraine so it just was a yeah very telling exhibit but they have a new one I have not seen what the theme is yet so I'm probably gonna be stopping by soon because they always go they also have a good gift shop and I love me a good gift shop and anyway <laughs> go ahead go hang out at the shack Go hang at the shack. Yeah. Um, some other good places. The Everett Library is downtown. Yeah. It is a fantastic place to hold events and just go. They have a little coffee shop in the front there, too. Mm -hmm. um, the Imagine Children's Museums, so if you got kids and family, it is a fantastic place Maybe for them just to just go really read it. run around. It's like a dollar. I feel like it's like millions of dollars that went into it. It was I've expanded been extensively. Videos. I'm like, heck yeah. So I'm going to try to drag my niece to go. She's two. It'll and, be perfect. And a little tidbit. From what our last episode is, it is across the street from the Monte Cristo. Yes, it is. So you yeah. go right down there and it, see it. So it almost looks like it's under construction still, though, because there's like that crane that's, that's a part of the design. Part of the exhibit. I know, but for the longest time, I'm like, why are they leaving a crane up? And then I finally drove like on that side of the building. I'm like, oh, it's all part of the it's look. It's part of the building. It's part of the look. So it's not under construction, guys. It's open. It's good to go. Have fun. But also, Funko, if you love our friendly, big headed. I don't character what you would call those little plastic Funko pops. Funko pops. They're just Funko pops. They have their own if name. If you're a pop culture person, yeah, that's the thing. They're fun. I like them. Anytime they have a release, there is a line out the door yes. in the corner for hours before they even open. Like every day. So on if, Saturday specifically, I think they can. They're allowed to start lining up. I believe at four in the morning or five in the morning. Check the internet, but. You can drive by it like six or seven in the morning and it's wrapped around the block. So it's crazy. Yeah. And I don't really understand what they're releasing or if it's, I guess I, maybe one day I should get in line and see what's going on. But I just went recently and I bought um, Doc Martin or not Doc, Doc Martin, Doc from Back to the Future. Uh, <laughs> I don't know why I said Doc Martin. I'm crazy today. Doc Martin. Doc. Um, I was thinking of shoes. Maybe I should get some new shoes. Anyway, Doc from Back to the Future, and he's on my shelf with all my Back to the Future stuff because yep. I can nerd out for years on that. You like it. Also, too, Angel of the Winds Arena. Mm -hmm. So if you're a hockey fan or anything else because they have concerts and performances. Yeah, do you guys know we have a, a hockey team? We do. Go Everett Silvertips. Um, now, I don't know if they're doing it every year, but I know that the um, Kraken have practice. Nice. And like done like a game or two at our stadium yeah. to kind of bring everybody in. But the silver tips um, pretty much sell out every game. They were it's this last so game. It's so much fun. It is a lot of fun. I enjoy going. Like so, if you don't want to go to Seattle and do a Kraken's game, which you can still do, still valid, still good. Yeah. Everett Silver Tips is a hoot. Totally like, good like fun. Um, also, if you are a uh, Schitt's Creek fan, <laughs> we have our own little gay uh, modern general store, yeah, we do. Petrichor. Um, so if you want to get some fancy dancy little modern general store Very trinkets and plants mm -hmm. and... Fantastic. And a lot of the stuff that they bring in is stuff that they grow in their own garden. It is. Which is my favorite because I also garden. You know how I am with the gardening. Anyway, I'm redoing my garden. So maybe I should go bug them and be like, hey, how do I make my garden as pretty as yours? Because I'll see their posts and I'm like, wow. Um, also, they are expanding. So they're yeah, expanding they into the space next door to them, which should be fun and exciting. Floors. Like in the, the first part is like the wood flooring. Gorgeous. And then the second, there's this like beautiful tile. I was like, Penny guys, tile. you're just, you're wowing me with some 
So we appreciate amazing it. flooring. They actually also, I guess we could do a side note, are hosting a benefit for the Everett Pride, Pride. Um, on April 16th. 16th. Yeah. So we're going to be doing like a breakfast benefit. Uh, it With them and South Fork Bakery. Yep, South Fork Bakery. So she's going to be putting on some different food items. If you follow the Everett.Pride on the Instagram, you can kind of see the menu. But come hang out with us. We're going to be there. All eating day breakfast. on the 16th, eating breakfast and ch chatting about pride and what's coming in June. So, yeah. yeah. And speaking of food. More food. Food and coffee. Food and coffee. Some of our... So, I'm going to preface this food thing first. And I think I've mentioned it in a previous episode. Probably. Still one of my favorite restaurants. Still one of my husband's favorite restaurants yes. is the New Mexicans because he is yes. from New Mexico. Um, it's just good down, food. It is good food. Um, again... Probably the reason why we moved to Everett. Yeah. Yes or no. It worked out other ways, but this was and a they good stayed. deciding factor. Oh, we got people chatting. Oh, it's what you do when you're in public. Yeah, we're in public. I might have so. to wait a minute here. Let me do their thing. It's okay. We'll edit this. Okay. It's out. All right. Um, in other food things, though, I... Let's see. We got Brooklyn Brothers Pizza. We have Brooklyn Brothers, the original one. Yes. They have multiple shops, but this is... They do. My only downtown. downside is that this one's not delivery. It is not. Which is fine, because I can get in my car and come pick it up. But they also do pizza by the slice when you're there. They have, like, massive salads and stuff like that. So I definitely recommend it's right across from Angels of the Wind. So Can't go get it. some pizza. Go to a concert. Go get some whatever... Yeah, good stuff. And then um, not far, that, like a lot of the food I feel like is on Hewitt, really, if you think about it. Uh, and Spike Hewitt's probably one of my favorite. Yeah, right. Now. Just keep walking. Sai Bai Thai is like my favorite Thai place right now. It is delicious. I love it. It's just so good. Anyway, so I would recommend them in the Thai food department. Mm -hmm. um, what's the Korean place that we had those glass noodles at? That is Cafe Yu Yu. Yeah, Cafe Yu Yu. We really, really liked their food. They are delicious. They have amazing um, Sunday brunch if you want to get the, the, brunch yet. I'll have the to go pancakes brunch. with the blueberry compote. Stop. Uh, okay. Delicious. They did that. It was a Colby beef glass noodle oh. sloth. I don't know. A kimchi. It, guys, it's amazing. Go check it out. It even tastes good to go. Like, sometimes it's hit or miss when you go places that are like takeout. It's valid. And I got it as takeout. Still tasted delicious. Everything on the yeah. menu is delicious. Um, Especially if you want some good like Korean food. Totally. Yeah. She's amazing. And the owner is so sweet. She's so sweet. She will deliver your, your receipt or bill in a little book. I know. And it's always a different book. So it's, it's just kind of fun. Book. Yeah. That, that's the cutest thing ever. Um, I'm trying to think of what other food places I like. <laughs> there's many, guys. Uh, there's so many. Um, oh, my gosh. There's that chicken place also on oh, Hewitt, yeah. yep, which yep. is delicious. Also by the Angel of the Winds um, mm -hmm. Arena. Um, there's Kate. Is it Kate's? The place right here on Colby. Yes. Kate's, right? I'm like second guessing myself that that's wrong, but I'm like, yeah. yeah, yeah. And then um, Major League Pizza, there's another pizza place. Also very good. They have yes. some pasta dishes. And then there's the, the, the ramen place that's right here. Botan Ramen? Yes. I just went there for the first time maybe a month ago. I really, really liked mm -hmm. their ramen. It was good. We also ate at Red Chili, which is a new Indian okay. restaurant. Forgot we went and did that together. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Also, if you want some good Italian food, Chianti and Caper and Olives. And in Amantes, right? Amantes. And Amantes. Amantes, I think, is more like pizza and more calzones. Yeah. Less noodles. You can still get pasta. Yeah. But if you want, like, good pasta. Say, a lot of food here. Chianti's and Which is not Caper a and Olives. So can we talk about dessert? Sure. We're lacking dessert in Everett. So if you want to do a dessert place, holler. We'll find you a location. I, we're not buying it for you. We'll help you buy a location for dessert. But <laughs> what we do have is Las Fritas, which is literally across the street from where we're sitting. Oh. Have you been there yet? No. Oh, you should go. Um, maybe we'll meander over there. Maybe we will. So uh, I originally was like, I really want a lote. Where can I find a lote? <gasps> uh -huh. And Las Fritas opened up. So she has a lote and some other stuff, but she does a lot of um, Mexican desserts and stuff like that. So you'll get. Yeah, Helados, ice cream? Yeah. No, no, no. But yeah, and then at, at Las Fritas. And so, like, the they have that. They have, um, oh, what is it? I don't know. Good ice cream, but it's, like, all kind of different mixtures. So, like, it won't even be ice cream half the time. <laughs> it's just, like, different candies mixed together. 
it's I don't know and it, it's an experience I went with my sister finally because I was like begging to go and it's amazing so also in the realm of baked goods there's also Shoo Shoo Bakery too Shoo Shoo yep on Grand Delicious they are um, and then to... South Fork will be having a location down on the waterfront which I think we talked about last episode we did talk about but yeah, you can but pick up her bakery goods at Catalyst Cafe yes. which is right on 23rd and Colby, Colby yes so that is one of our favorite locations for coffee and they have the baked goods of the south fork bakery so they do and it's uh, actually lgbtq plus mm -hmm. cafe space so mm -hmm. it is a safe space it is that is the yeah. goal which we love it and one of our good friends is the owner so we get to kind of hear all the fun updates i know right now they're fundraising to move locations they so are, stay tuned yes yeah and if you want to donate to them reach out to us we can send you the link but yeah follow they're them on an instagram too. yeah and follow them on instagram because it's exciting for them also some of my other additional favorite places for coffee are narrative heck yes is kind of like an institution now yep. in Ephraim. um also this is my husband's favorite and it is delicious is nadine's which is right across the street you know i still haven't been there and he talks about it all the time to me and i just i need to I'm a bad person. And Nadine's is kind of like a speakeasy mm -hmm. coffee shop. So it's actually in a barber shop. Um, around oh, the I didn't corner. know that it was in the barber shop. Yeah, you can go through the barber shop when it's oh, open. Oh, no way. I didn't right know that. Okay. Through the big, the big door. I've heard amazing things about it because she kind of does like cocktail coffee. She does. Or he does. I thought it was someone. Why did I think it was a lady that owned it? I know I it's Nadine's, know. but I thought a lady owned it. Whatever, maybe it was somebody else I'm thinking of. Wow, Ashley. I'm sorry, I'm a bad person. I'm sorry. So. I see the posts on Facebook and they look good. I just need to go. They're craft, like. Obviously, Jermaine doesn't invite me. No. So we didn't talk to him about it. <laughs> I thought we were. I thought we were friends. I thought we were friends. So. I'm trying to think if there was also like, another good coffee place is the Loft. Yes, that's the other one I was um, thinking of. Downtown Everett really is like not short of. Coffee. Co coffee and uh, Mexican restaurants. Those are the two. Whenever yes. we're being told there's something new coming, it's Mexican food or coffee. I like El Plurizo. I like all of it, but it just Probably. cracks me up that like every time they're like, something new's coming, and then I'm like, oh, just more Mexican food. And it's all good. They're yeah. all very different, but it's just funny to me that we just seem to have a surplus of the two things. Also, too, in the downtown area, like we mentioned, is the Central Business District. Mm -hmm. So all the banks and the city municipal buildings are also yes. down here, too. So mayor's office, city council's office, not just for the city, but also for Snohomish County at large. Yeah. So you have a lot of the courthouses, mm -hmm. um, police departments, of Yeah, course, if you get jury duty, office. you're coming down here Yeah. to do it. I had to do it. I didn't get selected. It's okay. It's fine. I kind of wanted to you get know, selected. You know what's crazy is I have never <gasps> been selected. You're going to get... Oh, wait. And I've always been the one that would be like, if I ever did do it, I would do it. Like, oh, right. I'd be totally down for it. Yeah, no, me too. I, I'm all for jury duty, and yeah. they don't ever pick me, and I'm like, it's because they know I want to do it. It's You it's, have to act like you don't want to do it. They always choose the ones that don't want to do it. To jury duty. I, like, I'm not I almost got selected last time, and that's because they walked us over in a line where we were pretty much holding hands to the <laughs> civil, right? No, yes. The other smaller courthouse. I think that's the civil side. Maybe. Um, it's more of like people that are in jail for like if they've been arrested for like stalking or something like that. Like, kind of smaller stuff. Smaller crimes. And I was sitting there and I was number 12 and I'm like, I'm going to make it. I'm going to make it. I'm going to make it. And then the guy kicked me off and I was like, dang it. So I didn't make it. But I was like, Ugh, this close to being a juror. So Maybe yeah. next time. So you have a complaint, civil and or government. Federally, it's here. Federally. Yeah come to the central business yeah. district something cool that we just found out um so everett has what's called the economic alliance of snohomish oh, yeah. county mm -hmm. uh, which is also trying to create an everett chamber of commerce we in need our that area. everybody and they're asking the city to move into the old pioneer place or is it frontier it's frontier i want to say frontier it's on colby and hewitt but it was an old bank building that's been vacant for a while yeah uh, they're wanting to input that there to put a, a permanent location uh, which I think is fantastic. I think it'd be a great location because it's that um, intersection where the Christmas trees up during the holidays and all the snowflakes and stuff like that. So it's yeah. it's a corner that's used a lot. It's like the center of downtown. And yeah, really, it is the center of downtown. So having a chamber there that's and also it's like a big enough space to host events there and do things it's and huge. just yeah. So I hope I have the curtains closed on the windows. So I, I can't like see inside. I'm like, what's going on? Guys? But I, you're right. It's been vacant for a while. It is. They have the offices above it. Yeah. that are occupied um, with others. But for the most part, the actual bank side is also yeah. 
there too. Sorry, I thought I turned off my mic. We're good. I no. always think I'm pushing a button and we're not pushing a button. Buttons. I'm sorry. Don't do it. Uh, um, but yeah, that is pretty much Bayside. It is Bayside. I, I, I kind of want to throw here. it out to our friends here that listen. Tell us your favorite. Let's talk about ask questions. Yeah, ask questions. I mean, downtown's massive. It's always changing. I feel like there's always somebody new moving in, something moving 100%. out. Yep. So uh, I guess we could toss in. It's technically not Bayside, but they weren't open yet. But Pisces Pie, we went to their grand opening last week. They're on, oh, yeah. is it 15th and Rucker. Rucker. So they're really close to this one. They were in last week's episode, but now that they're open, we went. Uh, banana cream pie, amazing. Totally worth it. Brand new. They Brand opened new. up on Pie Day. On Pi Day, it was fun. They had the whole March ribbon 14th. cutting. It was like a whole thing. Um, go check them out. Go visit them. Yeah, they they got good pie. Brand, brand new. And they're I think they're closed only right now on Mondays, but every good. other day of the week it seems like they're open. But yeah, I just and want they to also have coffee. They also have coffee because <laughs> we need, need more, more coffee. If you need more incentive to go eat pie, there's also coffee to kind pie. of substantiate oh, that. We forgot about our sushi restaurant right here. Sorry, there's good sushi also on Colby. Anyway, more food all day long. I could go all day. I'm going to leave from our recording and be like, we didn't talk about this place or this place or there's this place. Lot. There's a lot. Um, I would love, yeah, but again, I'd love to hear from you guys. Tell me your list yes. of your favorites. Uh, is Give there somewhere we didn't talk about that we need to go check out? Are you opening a place that we need to go check out? Let we'll, us know. Yeah, we'll go. We want to know. We'll we go. need we'll more food in our life. <laughs> I always need more food in my life. I know. Life. I have to eat three times but, a day. It's a weird concept. Yeah. yeah. Bodies. So. Well, this is exciting because yeah. we're almost wrapping up North Everett. Yeah, we're almost done. So we're done. eventually going to start getting into South Everett and those different neighborhoods down there because Everett's pretty big. It is if a big, big city. Know. So more to come. We're only on episode five. Yeah. And we have another 14 more neighborhoods to go explore. There's still 14? Yeah, there's 19 oh, altogether. Oh, my. We're going to be on this for a long time, guys. This is fun. I know. This is great. I, for some reason, I thought there was only 13. No. I'm Maybe I'm combining neighborhoods. Possibly. Probably, most likely, is what I'm doing. Awesome. Anyway, but yeah, it was fun to, uh, chatting with you all today. Oh, yeah. Anywho, well, my name is Kevin. And I'm Ashley. And thank you guys for watching. We'll see you in the neighborhood. See ya.